What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the AFK Hour podcast. I'm your host, Jay Lucio, and today is episode 38. And today we have um, Big Boy Eddie. Hey, guys. And Snaker Bod. What's up? It's been uh, quite some time since we did a podcast. The last time we did it was before the great Texas freeze. So um, we had to take a break uh, on the podcast and we had to use old footage. And yeah, I mean, it was really bad down here. I, I wasn't as it wasn't as bad in Laredo, but in San Antonio it was pretty fucking bad. Uh, how was it for you guys down there, uh, Eddie? We froze over too, but it, um, thankfully I personally didn't lose light at all, so it was it sucked, but it was tolerable. For me, I lost light and electricity for four fucking days, and it was like I was just like, what the fuck um i was in my my apartment and i was just well i live currently i live by myself right in my apartment and um i just remember that the light went off like around two in the morning and i'm just like oh okay no worries by the morning my lights will be back back. yeah no no biggie right so i go to bed and i wake up and my apartment is freezing and i'm just like oh fuck like i I, like what am i supposed to do i I just got like all my covers my gold chest and then i just covered up and i just bundled up I'm just like, well, I can't go out because like all the roads are all fucked up and they advise not to go outside, like to to drive and whatnot. And it was snowing a lot. And um, so yeah, that's how I spent my first day, just in a little fucking ball, a cocoon of like blankets. The next day I was just like, okay, well, light still hasn't come back. And I I started getting hungry. Well, I, I guess I didn't really eat anything the first day. Second day I was just like, okay, well, fuck. And I ate like PB and J because like you can't use any microwave or ovens or whatever because everything's electronic here in my apartment. So yeah, it was it was just really tough for four days without anything. And like, um, obviously you did experience a snake robot because you're over there in the safety of Nevada. It was like but... 70 degrees here <laughs> <laughs> during the same time. Yeah, nice sunny, clear skies. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it was... I was awfully quiet those three, four days without George. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was an interesting experience, to say the least, I guess. But yeah, I'm glad that everyone is back and we're... we're well, everyone's safe and um, hopefully not that many people were um, affected in the long term. Because, I, I mean, I saw yeah. some videos, like, they were really scared. Like, their house bad. got destroyed. Like, it was really bad. I saw, uh, it was just weird for me. It was like visually going outside my house and the, you know how I have like a little porch? Mm-hmm. It was actually icicles around the whole border of the thing. I was like, huh, that's something you would never see here. Yeah. Like on my third day, like my car was full of snow. I had to like get like a, the, um, I guess like the, you know how you do the sweeper and there's like a little pan, the sweeper pan or whatever. I didn't have anything to wipe off the snow, so I used the super pad to scoop up all the snow on my car. There was like at least two, three inches of snow on my on my car, which I've never actually done. And I'm just like, dude, this is what people have to do every day? Like, fuck that, dude. I don't want to scoop off snow off my car yeah. every fucking yeah. day. Apparently, there's easy ways to go around them, but it's not something you learn until you live in those kind of places, right? Yeah. And like, also, like, if you live in those places, your doesn't your car get fucked up because they have salt on the road and like that fucks up the in, like the the bottom of the car. It like it yeah, rusts more. Rusts and stuff. You're supposed to add chemicals to it and all this stuff, but who's gonna do that, right? Yeah. But yeah, like I said, I'm glad that everyone is safe and everyone had like I guess a uh, quote unquote week off, even though it wasn't really a week off. It was just like try survive for a week. <laughs> But um, yeah, um, I guess we'll just jump into our regular stuff. So what have you guys been up to for this past week? Eddie, would you like to start? Uh, Divinity. As far as gaming or just in general? Gaming, live, um, living and stuff like that. Well, for live, I'm having issues with my vehicle again. It was, uh, it was about due time. <laughs> Snake your butt. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but I mean, that's getting fixed, so that's, it's whatever right now. Uh, I've been playing Divinity with Nick and Destructicon, which is pretty fun. We've been playing in modded like we started uh, with Thinkerbot, but we never finished. And that's basically it for gaming. That game takes us way too much fucking time. Okay, and how about how about you, Thinkerbot? What have you been up to? Uh, I mean, just life stuff. I mean, just working out as usual and gaming. I actually started playing Ghost of Tsushima, which I tried streaming for a bit, and uh, that didn't work out because I don't know what happened. But I've just been playing that game like all week. It's honestly probably one of the best games I've ever played, I think. It's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. Reminds yeah. me of Dark Souls, but then again, a lot of games do. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like Dark Souls, but not. it's definitely not as hard. That's good. Yeah. Get confused with the Ghost of Tsushima, no, Ghost of Tsushima, right? Is that is that how you pronounce it? And yeah. um, the other one were Sekiro. yeah, Sekiro. Yeah, I always yeah, first, I was getting confused. I don't know why. Sekiro is more like actual Dark Souls style. Like it's really hard, but Ghost of Tsushima you can just play like casually, kind of like Assassin's Creed kind of is. Yeah, kind of. It's a very open world too, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's really pretty actually. Yeah, a it's... gameplay of it. It's like one of the best game, like best looking games I've ever played, I think. And I see that you were adding more collections to your stuff, like the background, the Guardians, your the Las Vegas Guardians or whatever. The oh, team. the Golden Knights? Yeah, the Golden Knights. I've had that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you have? My food oh, okay. Yeah, I've had that <laughs> since I, I moved in actually to our house. Uh, well, what they're, is uh, your... they're doing pretty good this season. Oh, they are? Yeah, they're, uh, they're top of the division right now. Um, and what is what does your wife think of all the par the paraphernalia? Is that for, all the all the fan stuff? Yeah, she likes it. She she really likes the Golden Knights too. So that's actually the one sport she'll sit down and watch with me is uh, hockey. That's good. I mean, I, as long as you guys keep on bonding, because I mean, you said that you played Minecraft with her one time. Oh yeah, on the <laughs> Xbox 360. That was God. When we were in high school, we used to play uh, Minecraft together. But she didn't really, she's not a big, big video gamer. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's good. Um, as for me, all I've been doing is just like, I guess, schoolwork. Um, I've been playing a shit ton of Valorant, which I don't know, like I said previously, I don't know whether I like it or not. Because, like, um, I don't know, like, it, it's weird because, like, I play so many hours, but I still haven't come up to, with a verdict. Like, do I like it or do I hate it? I, I can't decide yet. Um, mainly because it's Riot. Like, I I hate the <laughs> fact that I'm supporting Riot again. Um, uh, before, I was, like, a huge hater on Valorant because it just looks like a mobile game. And there's so, many shit going, there's so much shit going on and, like, it just seemed overwhelming. And it was just a straight carbon copy of um, CSGO. And, um, yeah, there, I mean, I just didn't want to like it. And... I started playing it and it was okay, but when I started playing with other people, I'm just like, okay, this is a lot more fun. Obviously, like every game is more fun with more people. But um, yeah, I mean, but it's like, it's 50 50 because like I like playing with these people, like the people I've been playing with are cool, but like they also aren't gamers uh, to the extent of like we are, if that makes any sense. Because like I'm not that good of a gamer yet. You want me to play? No, but you're a gamer though. You're a gamer at heart because like you don't tilt or rage or like if you lose, you don't report the enemy team because they're cheating or something like that. Like we just play. Like I'll give you an example. Yeah. Like um, whenever we do lose, um, they're just like, oh, they're cheating. Report them all. And I'm just like, what? Like, I mean, that's not. It's whatever. So they're Call of Duty mentality. Oh, you're doing better than me, so you must be hacking. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And like, if they lose one game, they take it really, really personally and in, like to heart. And they're just like, I don't want to play no more. Like they got really sad. And I'm just like, <laughs> come on, guys. Like we just we just have to stay positive and like go, go to the next game or next round because they're like literally like they're all like Marcos in League of Legends. Like if you <laughs> die, if they die two times at the beginning, they're just like. It's over, guys. F half, blah blah, and I'm just like, what? And like, here I am fucking two and eighteen team, <laughs> still trying. They can yeah. win, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I think. But, I mean, the... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. 
the like best mentality I've I've learned in video games is to just like not take losses hard at all. And I think I actually enjoy losing in League too much. <laughs> <laughs> I actually enjoy losing more in League than it just being like a complete stomp and then FFing in 15 minutes. <laughs> like you have to yeah. just learn to just enjoy it. Who cares if you lose? Yeah. yeah. What I enjoyed you, what uh, what I enjoy seeing you and uh, Yang do every once in a while is just screw people over because they were screwing you over at the beginning. So you're like, ah, oh, fuck this. <laughs> yeah, I don't take losses hard at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like, like with the people I've been playing with, they they always ask like, why are you so positive? I'm just like. I played League of Legends for a very long time. <laughs> and it's really, I learned a lot of lessons. Yeah, like I can't get really tilted that much. Like, and they're like, what, what, what gets you angry? What tilts you? And I'm just like, League of Legends. Like, that's literally <laughs> the only game I've ever gotten really, really tilted in. Like, it's, it's just so fucking frustrating. And they're like, oh, like, why is it tilting? And I'm just like, because it's toxic as fuck. Like, it's super toxic. And they're like, how is it toxic that there's no voice chat? I'm just like, well, they find a way and it's fucking... <laughs> <laughs> there's a will. Yeah. There's a way. It, it's just, I don't know. Like, something about League of Legends, like, it just draws me... Well, not right now. It's, it hasn't drawn me back, but it's just... It's just... You just always go back to it. And it's like an abusive ex relationship, right? <laughs> like, like, you know it's not good for you, but you just... You can't get away from it, right? So... I mean, I mean, and something simple like, oh, I just died once. We can still win this. People are like, no, it's over. Fuck you. Yeah. Sangerbond knows what I'm talking about. Eddie knows what I'm talking about. So like yeah. when, um, like I said, when I'm playing with these new people, like I, I guess I'll give them benefit of the doubt because this is their first time, their first FPS or the first time they're actually grinding something. So they don't really understand, like, I guess the gaming culture. Um, But I don't know. Is, like, is there even such a thing as, like, gaming ethics? I guess there is, right? I think what you're referring to is just they're not used to having to deal with other people competitively. Uh, maybe. Because I'm pretty sure they know what gaming is if they're there. I'm pretty sure they've gamed their whole life. I mean, why else would you join a Valorant team? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, they're they're still learning. Uh, well, I'm still learning Valorant. I make it seem like I'm like the best player ever, but I'm not. I just been playing for like a month and a half. Um, yeah, it's just like a, obviously a, a learning curve, and like it's just something you have to get used to with loot losses, especially in um, in rated or rank or whatever you want to call it, um, because like they that's when they like they they just like if they lose one game and they get the mode in. They just like, I don't want to play this game ever again. I'm just like, D like that's just something with grinding that you're going to get demoted, promoted, then demoted again, and then demoted and promoted. It's just constant. It's just like up, up, down, seesaw thing. But yeah, so the new act has started. So um, I, like I said, I've been playing for a month and a half and I got to gold. But I feel like I haven't like gold is quote unquote, I guess, in an okay rank. I, guess, I don't know what the fuck it is. But um. There's some things I need to refine, and I think I could potentially get higher, but only if I put the time in, and I'm not sure if I'm willing to do it. I just play casually. Because, like, I, I mean, even at my, at my rate, uh, or I guess at my rank, people were flaming me because, like, you're not supposed to ADS. And since I come from Call of Duty and, like, all that stuff, I always ADS. Like, I aim down sights, for those that don't know what ADS means. Um, and they're just flaming me. And I'm just like, uh, like, shut the hell up. I don't, I don't know. You know how people get whenever people are complaining, right? But, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember the first time I ever tried, uh, ranked in a, a FPS game with CSGO. That was my first ever time playing ranked. I got kicked. <laughs> they voted to kick me. I was like, well, ah, screw this. I'm not playing this anymore. <laughs> kick you. They, you can vote to kick people in uh, CSGO. <laughs> I guess I was just too bad. You were just like, were you playing or were you trolling? Kick I was playing, yeah, but I didn't, like, I don't know what the hell to do in CSGO, but I was like, I, I want to try right. <laughs> and I just got kicked the first match. I was like, this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, dude. <laughs> 
I've always tried to play that game, but I'm, I'm so bad at it. I don't know Let's how. Go. Yeah. For like, for me being as decent as I am in Call of Duty, I completely suck at CSGO. I just don't understand it. Yeah, like, um, compared to CSGO and Valorant, comparing the two, um, obviously there's some parallels, but I mean, the, th the big difference is that there's so many different effects and like spells and stuff like that. And yeah. like, I guess the way that you said there's a lot of shit going on in your screen at once. And uh, I guess that's understandable, but I also play a shit ton of Overwatch. So like Overwatch is a little bit more overwhelming. And if you yeah. don't know the, the, the heroes and stuff like that, then you're gonna be like, oh fuck, what's going on? So like, I got like, I guess I got the best of both worlds because I know Overwatch, I'm a Masters tank player. So like, yeah. I understand the game and like, I'm able to track everything. But like, I'm also, I played a lot of Call of Duty when I was younger with everybody else. So I just combined yeah. those two and it just flowed better, I guess. I was never able to get into Overwatch either. I just never. I didn't, it's. I don't like games like FPS is when there's a bunch of shit going on. I just that's, like uh, gun. That's <laughs> like, one of the biggest memories I have playing video games with you. You're like, all right, let's play some Overwatch because everyone got on. <laughs> Literally after that game, fuck this, I'm getting off. <laughs> <laughs> I think I put probably already? like five or ten hours into that game. I just couldn't do it. Are you sure you guys played? overwatch before i started playing it consistently and then when i like because yeah. i remember there was a time where um i didn't have i lived in laredo and i didn't have internet and like i asked if i could crash at eddie's house and eddie was like yeah sure and all he was doing was playing overwatch and i was like okay well i don't want to play that shit game and then later on like like after like, i guess fast forward a year i'm like grinding overwatch and stuff like that like you're like Hey, I'm playing Overwatch now. You want to play? I'm like, no, that's a shit game. Yeah. <laughs> like, me and Eddie just started playing it because that was, like, the big game at the time. And, like, we always... Mm -hmm. We pretty much always play every Who invited us? Game. It was, like, it was Angel. Angel, right? Yeah, Angel. Angel, yeah. Are you guys going to play Overwatch 2? I mean... Wait, isn't it free if you have the first one? Or do you have to pay for it? I think it's a separate game, yeah. You have to pay uh, for it. I don't know. I might try, but... Probably not, if I'm being honest. Well, I probably won't. What I will say is that Overwatch 2 is like more co-op story driven. So you could get a squad of four and just do like the whole map and stuff like that. Like, you know, cool. you know how like um, the special events during Overwatch like that, but except there's like every week there's new ones. It's always changing from like day, night and like different seasons, winter, rain and stuff like that. So they're okay. putting more aspects of first or first or single player slash co-op to it and obviously the the multiplayer and whatnot so like the call of duty spec ops kind of thing yeah exactly call of duty spec ops but That's like cool, actually consistently every week there's supposed to be something different or every month i don't know but they're supposed to be rotating their content really quickly but um so, I mean, back to Valorant, would you guys ever try Valorant? I'm trying to get you guys to play Valorant at least, like, a couple games, and then we can see what happens and take it from there. You ask me a couple times a week, at least. <laughs> and the answer will be the same. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think I'll... I mean, if I do try, I don't think I'll like it, though. You honest. don't think you'll like it? No. Nah, just looking at it, I don't... I can tell just by looking at games, like, if I, I think I'll like it or not, but I don't think I would like it. How about you, Eddie? No. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm gonna continue trying to get into at least lobby one lobby with you guys, so we could try it all together. Um, I mean, all you yeah, you guys already have your Riot account, so all you have to do is just um, sign in on Valorant, and we could play it all together. But um, yeah, I mean, there is a lot of stuff that goes on. There's like uh, things that you have to learn, and there's smokes and like abilities and turrets and whatnot and it, it can be overwhelming at, at first but eventually you'll get the hang of it i, I know sacrobot you will pop off if you were like at least um consistent with it you would you would be like like at, up to my rank or even higher because you're always better in call of duty especially in search and destroy so that's why i thought it was always so weird because like you got you fucking love search and destroy and now yeah. this game is just only search and destroy you don't want to do it I don't know. I, yeah, I I love search and destroy, but those, just like the same thing with Overwatch. That's what it is, pretty much, is search and destroy kind of. 
But I mean, you have lives in Overwatch, but I didn't, still don't like it. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, we're gonna get we're one game. We're gonna we're gonna get one game. <laughs> one day. One yeah, day, one day. <laughs> um. What else? Oh, speaking about Overwatch, I guess another thing I've been up to. Um. So since I got into my university's esports team, we had our first. We had two matches last week. We had our um, our preseason, and we got fucking destroyed in our preseason. Of course you did. We got zero and three by like a bunch of top five hundreds, and I'm just like, what the fuck? Oh. And like, um, like I said, I, I only got to masters, and the rest of my teams they're lower ra- rated than me. So I'm just like, okay, well, we just got destroyed. And I was just, and during the practice, I was teaching them about the fundamentals, like about um, resetting and uh, and soft reset, hard reset, and stuff, just like Overwatch terms, right? And um, I guess we took a practice, like a week to practice on it. And during our first week of actual competition, which was this past Monday, um, we we took what we practiced and we applied it, and we won our first game. So that's my, I guess, my official. First game of the season is we're one and oh. We do I, do I smell a movie in the making? Movie in the making, yeah. Sponsored by Disney. <laughs> That's which another company we I don't like. <laughs> but yeah. Um we went three and oh against like um some college in Alabama. And um yeah. But I kind of feel bad because like I was watching their VOD and they're just like talking about how they practice super hard for the past week and like oh, it's like they really were trying really hard, and I'm just like, dude, I play Overwatch like only during the tournaments, like or whenever we play, like once a week, like that's the only time but I play. Or uh, maybe you're a better teacher. I guess I only played like twice a week, one during the actual game, and then one during practice. Those are the only times I play Overwatch, and like, um, I just felt bad like hearing their vods because like it seemed like they really were passionate and they really were trying and learning. But we just rolled them. <laughs> we just rolled them really hard. Uh, but I mean, I guess they had to take it uh, gracefully, I guess. So whenever, the learning whenever, experience. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Maybe they'll get better than you. Yeah, who knows? Team. Yeah, because I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to get better. I'm just like I. Uh, I am where I'm at. Yeah, so it's it. It is as, or as they say, um, it is what it is, right? But um, yeah. Uh, so like we, I won or we won our first um, esports match, and that's pretty much it. Just Valorant, Overwatch, and um, and schoolwork, midterms, and whatnot. But like, I mean, I've seen you guys play the what's that game called? The Viking game? Valheim, Valheim. I, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce it, but yeah. Yeah, like you guys were grinding that that game really nonstop. We still are. This is that um. Everybody there wants to wait for everybody to be on to, before we actually continue and do more stuff. Mm-hmm. But because everybody has messy schedules right now, we've just been playing and just collecting resources, so we haven't really done much. And like, and it's trying to get like six people on at the same time. Okay. So that's a little hard. And like, you're not playing at Sigurbon? You're not? Nah. I haven't, no, Eddie keeps trying to get me to play it, but I just, I don't know. I don't think I'll like it. I don't like how it looks. No. Uh, like I, I I think that's the charm of it, personally. It's very simple. Yeah, I don't, I because I've, I've watched streamers and stuff play it, but I don't, it just doesn't interest me. Maybe my taste in games is changing. I'm getting old. Yeah, we're getting old. <laughs> These damn, like. We can always go back to Ark. Yeah, but, I'll like, always go back to Ark. Like I was explaining to you guys yesterday, like I just don't understand why the the zoomies, all the kids say like, "Oh, you're so cracked." Like, why why is that even a term? Like, I understand. Like, you know, I understand in, in Call of Duty, like, "Oh, I cracked that guy." Like, you cracked his armor. Like, he has no armor in, in Warzone. But like, oh, he's cracked. He's cracked. Yeah, yeah. But when they're like, your teammates are saying, "Oh, you're so cracked," and I'm just like, "What?" They're like, "Oh, that means like you're good." And I'm just like, "Okay, like." I guess, like, it doesn't make sense, but I guess. Um, well, this is how uh, boomers feel with millennials. Yeah. <laughs> now, now we're the boomers. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, like, like I was explaining, like, it just literally does not make any sense, like, but um, I guess. <laughs> um, 
I guess the next thing we're going to talk about is Mars, the Mars landing. So did you guys watch the Mars landing? I know Snakerbot was very adamant. Did you about this? Did you? Yeah, I watched it uh, live when they landed, but like, obviously there's nothing you can see because they can't live stream it. Um, and then I watched the the actual recordings that they released like a couple days later of the landing itself. And it's just, I don't know, anything to do with space, I think is awesome. That's why I was really excited for it. Yeah. The final frontier, as they say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, um, when I was younger, well, I was studying aerospace engineering at the beginning when I was first doing, when I was in university, well, when I first started university and, um, I don't know. I was just really fascinated by space as well. And like, I would always, when I was younger, I would always go to like the Houston space center. Uh, we would go to museums and stuff like that. And I loved space. And like, I wanted to be one of those people in the rooms where it happened, where about all the, like, I guess the space launch rooms and stuff like that. And like, I, because like I said, that was really fascinating and like, it just really interested me. But when I was in university learning all that stuff, I'm just like, nah, dude, like this is too much. Like I got burnt out. I'm just a like, lot to learn. Yeah. Well, it's not that much. It's not crazy difficult in, to learn. It's just, I just got burnt out. Like, and I lost my passion for it. And I'm just like, damn, like, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. Like, it, I don't know. But um, I saw a glimpse, like little glimpse or stuff of it um, here and there. And I think what they're doing, is just crazy. Like to think that it took like a couple, like, was it, a, was it a couple months or days that it took to get there? Like from here to over there to Mars? Uh, it was like seven months, I think. They launched last year. Damn, dude. I think they Crazy. launched in June or July, somewhere around there. Yeah. Okay, so it took like seven or eight months, I think. So like seven months to get to Mars and like, this is our first rover there. So I would say within the next 10 years, we're going to be able to send people. So, I mean, it'll take seven months to get there. Um, whether if that's a one way trip, I don't know. <laughs> because <laughs> like, I mean, they're, they're saying that they want to colonize that shit. So maybe yeah. they'll have like a little set up a base and they'll just set, like have a place for those people that go there, stay there. It's and then they crazy if you think about it, it will take you almost a year and a half just to go visit for like a week or two. Well, with what like SpaceX is doing, I think we'll definitely see people land on Mars in our lifetime. I think within yeah, maybe even so. 10 years or so with what they're doing with the Starship and stuff. When I was a kid, they were theorizing that there's going to put they're going to put people on the Mars by 2020. No, by 2030. That's when they were going to yeah. put people on Mars and it like too far off. Yeah, and they're also saying that we'll have like colonies on the moon by the 40s. So I was just like, okay, well, I mean, as they say, technology doubles every every two years, right? So I mean, it seems very uh, practical that it will happen in our lifetime, or they're on track to hit those marks. But I mean, everything got defunded during like during Trump's <laughs> when he was president. Like, especially NASA got really defunded. And like, I'm not sure if they're up to par now. And that will, I mean, I guess time can tell, time will only tell what will happen in the future. Yeah. That's what sucks about like changing presidents every four or eight years. NASA just like, it's either they get money to do whatever they want or they don't get money in that presidential term, which is why like SpaceX, they're private. So they just do whatever the hell they want. They have a ton of money, which like, all their their Falcon 9 rockets and stuff. That's how they make a lot of their money, sending satellites and stuff. Well, they're trying to commercialize it for people to yeah. go to the moon, which is interesting. Yeah. Would you guys ever go to space if you had the opportunity? If you're able to come back, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, I think I would too. I think I would go on the uh, on a trip to moon and then come back. Dude, just. As long as in our lifetime you can have a cruise to the moon, that'll be fucking amazing. That'd be scary, but yeah. like so cool. <laughs> like up in space, they have, uh, just go to like the freaking restaurant and bars, whatever they have <laughs> on the ship, chill for like a week or two while you get to the moon. That would be crazy. Yeah. 
How much do you think? How much do you think it will cost to go to the moon in the future? A, a lot of money. They want it. They like. They say they want to commercialize like uh, space travel eventually. I don't, like I think it'll it'll happen, but not for like just the average person. I think it'll be like a At crap ton of our money. lifetime. Yeah. Right? SpaceX is actually doing a um, kind of like a giveaway thing. They're actually going to send one person, one civilian, up to space in their um, their Dragon Pod. You just have to donate like ten dollars to St. Jude's, and you get put into a raffle. Oh, interesting. So maybe a safe point going to space. <laughs> it's only for one person. <laughs> yeah. Who are we going to nominate in safe point to go to the moon? I nominate Not Eddie. That. I nominate Eddie. <laughs> send Eddie. The yeah, send pick. Eddie. <laughs> the freaking pass out out of fear and not record anything. <laughs> you have to record your whole trip, Eddie, for our, <laughs> our YouTube channel. <laughs> Wouldn't you want to go, Thinkerbot? I would go, yeah. I don't think Crystal would let me go, though. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think your <laughs> wife will let you. <laughs> yeah. I may have to sneak out and just not tell her. See you next year. <laughs> you you can get a, like a blow up doll to take over <laughs> to replace you. Sit in and the computer. What's it different? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean that's really that's really interesting. All that space stuff. Like um, I I remember as a kid, what what always made me really sad was to I the day when I realized that we would never be able, at least in our lifetime, to in um uh, interstellarly travel. Like, because that shit takes forever. Yeah, like planetary travel. Yeah. Or, I mean, leave our galaxy. We're, we're never going to be able to oh, leave our yeah, galaxy, sure. for sure. And I guess... Uh, hasn't one of the uh, satellites already done that, though? Well, our satellites, yeah. Because, like, they've been out there for, like, 50 plus years. Like, just out there, like, flying in space. Well, is it flying? I guess they just float. Float? Yeah. Float. And, um... Yeah, that made me sad when I was a kid. But um, we've caught we come a long way from then, and um, now we're sending rovers to Mars, and now we have memes as well <laughs> in Mars. <laughs> um, before we started the podcast, I was telling the guys that um, the my favorite meme so far is the one where it's like Houston, Houston, we have a problem, and it shows a rover and it has ET touching the rover. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's pretty, that's pretty good. <laughs> Have you guys seen any any other memes? I haven't seen any memes actually. Not really, no. But <laughs> yeah, like I want to see more memes uh, on Mars and yeah. <laughs> other than that, like the only other thing we have to talk about is I guess um, the GameStop again stonks. Like it's going up and down. It's anything about it. It it's like fluctuating, and. Um, <laughs> People are saying that's going to be another um, another run, but apparently there's like up to 50 lawsuits for Robinhood. Like, Good. yeah, because like what they, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what they did was honestly really fucked up. Like, it, it's like, it's like I don't illegal, know. pretty much. Yeah. So right now, from my understanding, from the articles I was reading, there's 50, 50 lawsuits <laughs> coming up for Robinhood. And um, hopefully the lawsuits get something because... Like, I mean, honestly, it's really fucked up. Honestly, whoever was on Robin Hood could probably sign up, like, a joint lawsuit and probably get something out of it, too. Yeah, and, but yeah. they have to obviously show proof and whatnot. I thought, like, the whole GameStop thing was over, and then it just freaking blew up again last week. Like, it was all the way down to $40. I was like, oh, it's over. It's it's not happening anymore. And then it goes up and to, like, $100. Huh? I was like, what the heck happened? It went up to $200 at one point. Did it really? Holy yeah. crap. Should have bought it again, damn it. <laughs> One can never tell, man. I know. Yeah. Like, um, like always during these great events, the best thing that come out of it are the memes. And like the, the, the memes that came out of it on um, on uh, Wall Street Bets, it's just like, <laughs> oh, the revive, like, I don't know why, like, they're coming back from the dead GameStop when you think they're out the second quarter. Oh, my favorite one is uh, um, the Randy from South Park, and he got his ass beat, and then he gets back up, <sighs> and he's like, I don't, I didn't hear no bell. 
But yeah, that shit's so funny. I saw... I didn't... I just read the title, so probably the worst thing you can do, but of an article of something I had to do with, like, the CEO taking a, a bonus from GameStop. Oh, that maybe. was AMC, I think. Oh, it was AMC. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, GameStop, yeah, yeah. I've heard they're actually using this as, like, a positive thing. They're actually doing, like, good stuff with it. Yeah, and you're right. And the only thing I saw is that uh, they now sell graphics cards, too. Yeah, they're, like, actually, it seems like they're trying to revive GameStop with what's happening, <laughs> which is cool. Like, I would hate to see GameStop completely go away as much as, like, they kind of do deserve to because their business they model want, is just yeah. so outdated. But, like, that's a, that's everybody's childhood. Everybody remembers going to GameStop, getting a game, sitting in the car, just looking at the back of the freaking case, just reading it on the way home, being so excited. Uh, here at I, when we were doing iNation, having a bunch of midnight release uh, events for them. Yeah. Yeah, we did that. It was pretty fun. I, I really do hope GameStop stays around, but they definitely need to change. <laughs> One of the first moves I saw when all this started happening with GameStop was uh, GameStop then is just like a normal GameStop and then it says GameStop in the future and it's something futuristic with like flying vehicles and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I do know is that AMC, like, um, I didn't know about the that the, the CEO gave, it, gave themselves like um, bonuses and whatnot, but I did see that they um, paid off their debt, like all the, from AMC and also GME. Like both companies paid all their debts, so like right now when the I guess when everything becomes post COVID, um, their business model should be very strong because it's just profit from yeah. from then on. So um, yeah, obviously we're not business advisors, but if you are in those stocks, good luck <laughs> and um, hashtag Diamond Hands, I guess I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Other than that, I, that's pretty much it for this episode. Do you guys have anything to add? No, sir. Oh. Okay, well, um, this is Save Point signing out. We'll see you guys at the next Save Point. See ya. Bye. Bye.